on the field. Right, we're back, everybody. We are back. Oh, I don't know. Oops, let me put the volume down on that. Should have played that on my phone. Uh, welcome back, everybody. As you can see, I, I tucked all my hair inside. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw uh, News with Norby's last night, but uh, it was a wild time. I got hella lit. Apparently, I told uh, Jay from South Texas that my hair will fuck him up. Uh, I still hold. I still stand stand by that. I still stand by that. Uh, aside from that, everybody, uh, welcome back uh, to Run the Fade. We are back. It is April 1, April Fool's. A lot of things were were uh, put out there. Uh, let's start off with the first one. The first thing I put on my um, on the title, I said, Blue Devil, jealous of Adam 22's boyfriend. Uh, I was watching him earlier. Uh, he seemed very uh, riled up uh, because apparently uh, Adam 22 did a post for today stating that he f he has done his first uh, gay scene. And uh, I mean, honestly, that wouldn't shock me if he did or he already has. But uh, I noticed that uh, Blue Devil seemed very bothered by it. I mean, he seems so bothered by it. I mean, he put, like, literally he put bo both of the pictures uh, on there. And just to show the audience, just so that he can see it. I, I do wonder how long he spent actually looking at those pictures. Trying to figure out uh, how this all came about. Apparently to him, uh, this is just a April Fool stunt. You know. Okay, I'm sorry, I take that back. It's not an April Fool stunt. He thinks it's real because he was mad mad. He was very upset. He was very distraught watching another man with Adam 22. Now, I did post something. I think I might have posted yesterday in the community uh, community post. And I did put that up. It's a little odd that uh, uh, this guy, Blue Dildo, tends to uh, put uh, men's pictures with no shirts on. I mean, I don't think I'll ever do that here. And I will never uh, put a thumbnail of a half-naked guy on, on here so you guys can see it. But this guy tends to always put up guys' pictures with no shirts on. I mean, that's highly sus. Highly sus. And then uh, today, he goes on a, a crazy rant uh, how he disapproves of this and... And he does push the narrative that it, it is, he believes it's real. For him, it's real. I mean, he, he doesn't really care about April Fool's. He, in his mind, that riled him up seeing him with another guy. He got mad, man. And, and I get it. I mean, if you see a guy that you, you know, you secretly want or maybe you might have a crush on, I could see why you would be upset about it and, you know, push what you were pushing. So... You know what? Hey, man. Blue Dildo, there's plenty of dudes out there. I think you'll be all right. Don't sweat it, man. You'll you'll find you'll find them. You'll find them. You'll find them. But uh, I just wanted to add that in the beginning of, uh, of today's live. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tapping in. And you know what? I just realized I didn't do something that I am looking at right now. So bear with me, guys. I am going to uh, turn off the camera, but... I'm still going to talk. All right. So you guys can still hear me. Um, what I forgot to do was uh, replace my battery. because uh, This camera that I use actually uses a, um, a dummy camera that uh, allows me to use my camera for a good amount of time. So it doesn't die on me and I could keep showing my face. So what I forgot to do was replace the regular battery with the dummy battery. So let's see. So there that brings me back. Doesn't bring me back. All right, let's see. And there we go, and there I am. All right, so let me readjust this, make sure that we are Good to go. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I 
see what happens here. All right, so we're still there. Okay, cool. So pretty much at this point, I just kind of stop this stuff for a little while. There. All right, guys, we're back. We're back. I replaced the battery. We're good to go. I don't have to worry about the camera suddenly turning off on me. Uh, all right, so let's move on to uh, the topic at, at hand. And um, by the title, you guys did see that it does say the name Raider Tommy. Raider Tommy. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never really heard much about this individual. It never touched my radar. So it was very difficult to uh, for me to understand who this person is <laughs> so uh, so i did my little research i did my investigation now you guys are wondering why why raider tommy or who raider tommy apparently he's a promoter for uh for uh i guess uh events a very a lot of big events from what i hear so he's a promoter he that's what he works for and uh it seems that he's he's really much about about the community event so he seems to be out there maybe some of you guys have ever seen him once or twice out there okay so there was this interview he did and um and i tell everybody look when i go after somebody here it's usually because they've come after me they probably they might have gone after rhodium they might even gone after uh marvelous minds also, Marvelous Inks, Tony, you know, when they do that, they uh, they gave me permission to uh, go at them. And here's the thing: this guy is a guy that says uh, he doesn't um, he doesn't like uh, responding to things that he doesn't really know the facts about. Uh, he likes to get all the information before he replies with an answer to certain situations. And that's how it should be. You should definitely do your research, do your work, see what is and what isn't. But uh, let's see. I'm going to play this right now so you guys could hear it. So in this interview, they asked him, they asked him uh, how he felt about the the paperwork, about that marvelous uh, red, the the edited video that everybody spread about Marvelous, where he read, you know, Gil's fake paperwork. And the part where at the end he says, well, Gil, if you don't want people, you know, spreading your fake paperwork, why don't you show your real paperwork? And it, goes, it always goes back to that. And uh, I guess this individual maybe didn't know or didn't care. From what, I, from what I've seen, he's a very big supporter of uh, American Chola. Very big supporter. So when I heard him speak on it, I thought, uh, it's odd. What is this guy talking about? What is he talking about? How much does he know? But here, I'm going to play it for you guys so you guys, you guys could hear it yourself. So right now, they, they had asked him about what he thought about Marvelous not apologizing. And I will play it right here. What did I could have gotten? Uh, Gil caught up in a lot of uh, okay, hold on. Nonsense, a lot of drama. Hold on. Let me rewind. All right, here we go. Very different, especially something like that. You know, you know what did I could have gotten? Uh, Gil caught up in a lot of uh, love and nonsense, a lot of drama. You know, and then for you not to apologize or whatever and to do what you did, like, yeah, that's not. And that all happened. All right. And uh, that was his response. He felt that, uh, you know, he could, he could have uh, got in uh, American Chola in trouble. But this man right here has to be the biggest hypocrite because at this point, everybody already knows that that video was edited. And I, I still think it's funny that um, Gil, American Chola, Knowing that they've used edited footage of him, here he is still using edited footage also. So for him, it's like, it's okay if I use it. It's not okay if other people use it against me. 
And this guy, Raider Tom, he's a, I guess he's a very big uh, loyal fan to American Chola. Uh, I find that interesting because from what I heard, or now, not, actually, you know what, from what, not from what I heard, from what I've seen, from what I've seen, that this guy is a big supporter of American Chola. And from what I know, American Chola uh, was talking shit about this man's boss. Yes, yes. Raider Tommy has a boss. A pretty big boss. A very well-known boss. That American Chola did an episode on him. Uh, to pretty much uh, try and expose him with lies that he's a snitch. It's crazy. Uh, I don't. It's funny that this guy, Raider Tommy, works for this man. And supports the man that uh, calls his boss a snitch. I mean, let's let's uh, let's let's be real here. I don't I don't think that that man should probably be working for that man. Because how do you support American Chola, knowing that he publicly and I'm pretty sure the video is still on his channel, publicly said that your boss is a snitch, Raider Tommy. Your boss is a snitch. And of course, American Chella did it for the views. But right here you have Raider Tommy. Knowing that this man talks shit about his boss, tries to make his boss look bad, tries to smut up his boss's name. And here you have supporting the guy that's smutting up his boss's name. Don't you realize if this guy's lies would have been successful, it would have been bad for your boss. And if it's bad for your boss, it's bad for you because that's your job. That man that you're, you're, you're a fanboy of, you know, talk shit about your boss. The guy that literally pays your bills. The guy that supports you. And here you are on his, on American Chola's channel. <laughs> <laughs> Praising American Jola. Like what kind of idiot? Shout out to a new subscriber also. Uh what what kind of idiot, you know, supports the man that tries to mess up his boss's reputation? It's crazy. That's just crazy for me. But then again, I, I see, I do, I, I do a little bit more digging. I do, I do a little bit more digging, but, uh, I'll get to that in a second. Let me go back to, uh, again, his response to Marvelous saying that Marvelous should apologize. And I'll give him the benefit, benefit of the doubt. Maybe he didn't know that that was edited footage. Maybe the person that interviewed him lied to him to, uh, you know, set him up for failure. Because that's why we're talking about you, Raider Tommy. Because you were set up. Now, if you weren't set up and you already knew these facts, then never mind. This is this is a long overdue. Well, not long overdue, you know. But uh, this is your chance to run the fade. And uh, with that being said, um, let's go back to the more digging I did about this man. Which, it started to make sense. Uh, but before we actually, you know what? Hold on. Okay. And now this kind of makes sense too, right here. Because this man, uh, it's crazy because this man just surprises me every time. And take a look why. As you can see there, there's Raider Tommy. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys can guess who the guy right next to him is. Yes, it is royalty. Royalty. The guy that uh the guy that shits on uh Tony, the guy that uh sp sponsors and pays for reviews for uh Blue Devil. Uh this man right here is literally his biggest fan. I mean, look at it. 
And then when I when I see this, it starts it starts to make sense, right? Raider Tommy is a hypocrite, a liar, this uh, this a very disloyal employee. Here, let's see. Here's another one. Look at that. Jesus. Wow. Raider Tommy, everybody. The man that supports the guy that talks shit about his boss. That called his boss a snitch. Uh, did a whole ass episode of him. Of his boss. I do wonder if Raider Tommy was on American Chola's live chat. While he was talking shit about his boss. Still supporting American Chola. I do wonder that. I do wonder if he was there. <laughs> Let him know, Gil. Let him know. Because it's crazy that this guy could work for such a great man. And then allow... You know what? I just realized I didn't show you guys the pictures. You know what? Here. Let me just put that back on. All right. And this is my bad, people. Because I keep... I, I get way too into it. And then... <laughs> I totally forget that I'm supposed to do this to do that. But uh, here's, again, the pictures. So that my, my story makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> because I just realized I talked all that and you guys didn't even see the pictures. So here's the pictures that you guys can see. This is, uh, as you can see, he tends to uh, plaster his face and Royal T's face on pictures. I'm pretty sure that's Fat Joe and um, what's his name? Uh, big pun. Uh, here's another one. And my apologies again for not... Uh, Making sure that you guys actually got to see these pictures. All right. So this one's a man. I don't know what to say about this one, people, but uh, man, it, it gets, it doesn't get any better. It just gets worse. Yeah. 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 That's it. This is, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> Ah, but yeah, those are the pictures. And uh, like I said, it's crazy that this man, um, this man uh, would betray his own boss like that. And I met his boss. His boss is an extremely humble man, great man, very giving. So, and I'm surprised this guy, this guy would do that to his own boss. Uh, let's see. And it, and this is the other part why I'm going after this guy because this guy is such a fanboy of American Chola. I don't know if you guys remember this right here. Uh, this is the post that uh, American Chola did. He did this because uh, he wanted to boycott us. He wanted to make sure that uh, nobody that comes through Rhodium ever ever gets interviewed by anybody else. Uh, American Chola said anybody that goes to Rhodium, including Goto's, cannot ever go to his platform. So a big fuck you to you too. Go. And um, funny as it is, as you can see right there, it says Raider Tommy. All right. And you know what? Raider Tommy felt so inspired by this that you know what? He reposted it, it. He reposted it, it. As you can see right there, Raider Tommy, Raider Tommy reposted it because he was down to boycott Rodian Radio also. Another insult to his boss because his boss did come out on Rodian Radio. This guy, this guy is the most disloyal man I've I've ever met. I don't even think uh, Blue Dildo and, well, maybe Gil, yeah, would be this disloyal. Because this guy would boycott Rodian Radio knowing that his boss was on there, knowing that the people that his boss puts on was on there. You know, the funny part about this is that even though 
Even though I have no idea why, guys, I have no idea why this individual here decided to block me on Instagram. So I can't even see him on Instagram. I can't see his page. But tell me how this cocksucker has pictures of other people that have been on Rodeo and Radio. Tell me how he has pictures of them. And this guy still wants to boycott it. This guy still wants to boycott Rodian Radio. This guy is not even loyal. Knowing that his people that he uses for his Instagram that have gone to Rodian Radio and some of them made it to these events because of Rodian Radio and this guy right here says, fuck those people. We're going we're gonna to boycott everything Rodian Radio. This is the most disloyal hypocrite man I've ever met because this man right here, Raider Tommy, he's a user. He's a user until he's not, until he doesn't, he can't use you anymore. He's disloyal because he supports a man that literally made an entire show talking shit about his boss. He's a man that is trying to boycott the show that his boss went in showed up in how did this guy still have a job with this guy this guy has no loyalty this is fucking disgusting that somebody like this you know gets away with things like that but not anymore not anymore this one this is why we uh dedicated this one to you raider tommy because you're very disloyal you're a liar you're a hypocrite you have no loyalty to anybody except yourself. And maybe American Chola and royalty. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very disappointing. But you know what? I'm not going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't really know who this guy was. I still don't know too much about him either. I just know that he... Uh, well, I mean, I just said everything about him. And you know me, guys. I go by facts. I go by facts, and I'm, and that's how that's the way I keep it. I'm not. Oh, I heard this. No, no, I saw this. I know this. But uh, hey, maybe he'll call in later. Maybe he'll uh, you know, say something. To defend himself because as far as I know right here, the evidence against him is solid. This man, I, I don't even know if I could call him a man because I don't know. I mean, especially, hold on, let me get a second. Hold on, give me a second here. Especially after seeing this picture. I don't know if I could call this guy a man because I, I wouldn't cut my face out and and the dude I admire's face and put him on a picture like that. I mean I've only known, you know from movies. I've seen movies about people that do this kind of thing. Um it is worrisome. Bit scary, but uh, when you look at him, you're like, "Yeah, I could see this guy not giving a fuck about his own boss, not doing his own research, and just agreeing with everybody." Uh, a traitor to his community that he seems to say he's a part of, but here he is trying to boycott Rodium Radio, where. A lot of the talent that this man shows up to are there. It's crazy that uh, he's going to go to these events, smile at these people, smile at these artists, shake their hand, take pictures with them. Knowing that he's trying to make sure that the show that these individuals showed up to gets boycotted 
because he feels American Chola deserves an apology. I wonder if you ever called out Gil and asked him, hey, hey, bro, do you mind, you know, doing a show where you where you apologize to my boss? I mean, that would be nice. That would be nice if you had the balls to actually tell Gil, why don't you do an episode to, you know, praise my boss, tell him what a big difference he's made, what what, what changes he's made for the community. But I don't think he'll ever tell Gil to do something like that. He'd rather just be a cheerleader to Gil, a man that literally talks shit about his boss. And then, not only that, but a super fan of royalty. Royalty being uh, one of the well, the 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 CEO of a uh, hater world, Blue Dildo. Another channel that only goes out of the way to talk shit about Rodeo and Radio. It's crazy how this man supports all these people that talk shit about Rodeo and Radio to the point of boycotting them, knowing that his boss works with Rhodium, supports Rhodium, and shows nothing but love. But this man literally goes against his own boss. I mean, this guy's just lucky he doesn't know his boss. No, yeah, this guy's just lucky he, his boss doesn't know that this guy goes out of his way to uh, support people that smut his name and smut his friends' names. It's crazy. Very Tommy. I don't know, man. You you you're you're one. You're a piece of work. I'll tell you that much. You're a piece of work. And uh, now that I did all this research and digging about him, I I can see why why Tony had to call him out. Uh, I think I want to say maybe. Uh, two new two news with Norby's back, but uh, I recall that moment, and it did this stick with me. Like, why? Who is this guy? I need to know who this guy is. And then I saw that he did an interview, and he decided to put in his two cents, and that just gave me enough uh, motivation to uh, check out who this person is. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did because you know I got to make sure. I stay away from the from a, from people like this because I do go to these events. I do see all these people, and I I probably will see him, and he'll probably see me, and that's gonna be interesting when that that day happens. I mean, there's one thing about me is that I'm not gonna shy away, and if I see you, I'm gonna walk towards you, and I'm gonna try to shake your hand. You don't want to shake it. That's that's fine with me. But you know what? It's funny. <laughs> People like to make up stories. People like to make up stories. There's this one guy that, uh, you know, I I did that. I put I pulled out my hand and for a shake and see what's up. And the and the guy made up this entire weird scenario about it, and I thought it was funny. Um, it was just hilarious. But like I said, I probably will see this individual and um, I'm, I'll probably do the same thing. As soon as he looks at me, as soon as I know he looks at me, I will walk to him, try to shake his hand and talk because I will want to know how he can do the things that he, do, he does. Because as I find it hard. I find it hard to believe that somebody that has such a great boss can do something like that to him. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, let's move on. That is it for uh, the Raider Tommy. Now on to uh, this Milk 74 character. Because I guess he's trending because uh, he uh, he went to uh, Adam 22's uh, show. And apparently this guy said that uh, he would never do something like that. And uh, I'm going to show you a video that I'm going to you know react to. Uh, this, this is from, um, who is this guy? This is from, whose page is this? Cause I want to make sure I give him a shout out. Uh, this guy is, uh, his channel is point and shoot point and shoot. Uh, I, from time to time I look at his content just to see, uh, 
what goes on on the, on the white side of podcasting. And he's the guy to go to. So give me a second here. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. I don't think he's going to strike me. Oh, you know what? Speaking of strikes, uh, let me take the time here to explain something. Uh, a lot of people uh, got at me about why I took down certain content. Let me explain why. Uh, right now, we are trying to get monetized. And unfortunately, because of the strike that Blue Dildo did give me, and I think he's still attempting to, uh, you know, give me more strikes, I had to take down certain content so that, you know, I could reapply because I have to reapply again. And uh, hopefully with these videos taken down, we'll get approved because it would be nice if we could actually make some, you know, money off of this. Uh, so that's why you see a few videos missing right now because we're trying to do that. And again, because of the strike that Blue Dildo gave us, YouTube told us that... Uh, we were denied, but they did tell us that we could clean up our channel and you know, delete some things and then reapply again. So we're going to do that. We're going to, so you're going to see some missing clips, some missing uh, video. And now you know why, because we are trying to get monetized here, people. All right. So let's get into this video. Let me take this down. All right, let's see if, if it plays. Self-proclaimed Gilligan Slayer went ahead and decided to just turn his back on his entire fan base and go and do a podcast with the 16, even though he said about a thousand times he would never do that again, as it would be against his morals to sit down with a person with kitty diddling allegations, etc. Like That's crazy. This guy, the guy talking right now, you know, he has a good case as far as putting out information and facts about why Adam 22 is Adam 16 because of that relationship he had in, I think, in Canada with a 16 year old. I think he was like 23 at the time. Check out his channel. He, he explains it way better. I, I don't want to fuck that one up. Uh, and here he says that Milk 74 was pretty much in agreement with that, which is why he would he, he said he would never show up to Adam 22's show the six now that was a lie 16 does and so i guess he just went ahead and just said Fuck all that and threw all that out the window you know milk 74 has pretty much made his whole youtube career off of relentlessly cyber attacking the 16 and probably like a thousand videos where he talks about the 16's family and his Clinton lover of a father and how Lena got her stink socket discombobulated by jason love and how adam is a Satan. Hey, that Jason Lowe fucking broke his wife. That fool broke that fool's wife. She is no longer ever going to be normal. Satan worshiping cuck. I mean, it's just the list goes on, guys. Milk was the 16's biggest, like, op online for a long time. And that's what Milk is known for. Everyone knows this. He's not really known for anything else, really. And so now Milk74, whose name is Robert, decided to throw his Robert. morals out the window and turn us back on his fan i want to ask you guys something let me see would you guys be okay if i showed up to adam 16's platform just to shed in all these fools you know what let me let me uh let me try to see if i could do that as a poll let's see i don't think i can because i gotta cover this up again Anyway, let me know in the live chat, put yes or no. Yes, if you're okay with me showing up to Adam 16's platform. No, if you're not okay with it. Let me know. Let's keep going. And if I did, I would talk a lot of shit about the people I've been talking shit, including Adam 16. Who once loved and adored him to take the opportunity offered by Poetic Jala 
to go and sit down with the 16 and make friends again. And so this uh, would mean that Robert has forfeited his career. I mean, his show got canceled faster than Arsenio Hall. And I knew that this was going to happen as soon as I, when Milk announced he was going on No Jumper, I was like, all right, well, that's a wrap for the, uh, for the Gilligan Slayer. And I was absolutely right. There's so many, I mean, oceans of his fans are uh, in my comments saying, I used to love Milk, now I don't. I went over to Milk's page to go check out what his fans are saying under his com in his comments. Under his videos, I haven't seen one person defend his actions. Not one of his fans is defending him, okay? They all love him because of his hatred for the 16. Like, what could be going through his mind? I, I, I really wasn't trying to do no. I, That's crazy, though, because, you know, for me, I was going to try to go to American Chola's platform. I was going to fucking confront him about things. I was going to go in and ease it into a positive thing. And then as soon as, you know, he switched it up, then I would switch it up right back. Now, this is all in um, just so maybe we could uh, start the groundwork to maybe start not fucking hating each other. I mean, honestly, I only dislike Gil because all he does is talk shit, which I think it's a reasonable reason to not like him. But uh, I am willing to, like, try to talk. But I, we all found out that he wasn't. Instead, he doubled up and decided to fucking uh, threaten me on his live if I didn't take down his video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, so this is, so I wonder if this is what he did. I wonder if this is why he, that, that might be his reason. Who knows? Maybe he wanted to break ground. Or, you know. But this guy, you know, I like this guy that's talking right now because he, he really does break it down really well. There was no real issue, low. I mean, what a fucking idiot. And so for this video breakdown, I want to take you guys through the history of Robert's beef with the 16 and cover all the major points leading up to his downfall and just take you guys on a baby journey through the lore so you guys can understand exactly what's been going on. And I want to start with the first clip, which is going to be Milk's first interview with the 16 on No Jumper. Uh, and he and AD was there also. And this clip is what made me understand from the jump that Milk himself was a Gilligan. And this is why I never supported Milk from the beginning. And I've always made fun of him. Okay, so watch this clip. This is Milk74 on No Jumper. Listen to what he says. So when did you start getting into like real trouble and getting arrested and shit? 14. What'd they get you for that time? Oh, uh, for robbery. Okay. It was robberies from the beginning. It was just bullshit robberies. Right. This robbery was stupid because we could have got away, but they was trying to... Is it me or everybody gets caught robbing at 13 and 14? Sell it to some Mexicans, you know, because then the people that you go to when you got something in L.A. because they're going to chip over the money. So you, you took something and then you were trying to sell it to some Mexicans? Yeah. What would you take? A bunch of tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real hustler. It was brand new. It was like, you know, the and four gets this interview on no jumper because he says he's a Hoover from South Central. He's the only white gangster. He's a, you know, a real member really in the streets, putting in work on the front lines. And so the 16's interrogating him. He's trying to get a cool story about some gangsterism that Milk had underwent. And Milk says that his first big case was getting caught burglarizing people's tools. Is that what the Hoovers are doing? Hoovers are stealing tools out of people's sheds? And uh, fifth of all, he said that he uh, got a robbery charge. How do you rob someone for their tools? Are, are they carrying them around and you come up and say, break yourself, Loke, I'm going to need that skill saw, I'm going to need that tape measure? <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? It's not a burglary <laughs> charge, okay? Burglary is when you go steal things that aren't yours out of people's shit. And I think he thought about lying about it for a second because he didn't. He said robbery. He said he didn't. He was trying to come up with a cool way, something that simple. Robbie, because I mean, he did look like he was thinking about it. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Uh, tools. Because everybody's robbing tools now. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but uh, most Home Depots, uh, Home Depots, they get super fucking for tools because they have the rule of, uh, they have a rule if uh, somebody steals something, as, as soon as they get past the door, don't follow them. Just let them go. And uh, that was trending. So I wonder if that, I don't think anybody was doing that. Like, I'm going to say this guy's probably like late 30s. I don't think too many people were doing that or too many kids were doing that in the, in the like, I want to say early 2000, late 90s. Anyway, let's keep going. 
saying, I was stealing tools, lo. He said robbery. And he wanted to leave it at that. And then the 16 followed up. After this interview, Adam 16 uh, interviewed Crip Mac, who Milk74 hates. And Milk74 had a huge issue with this. And this is what caused the falling out between him and the 16. And he would end up like going to No Jumper and doing this weird fade call out uh, for clout. He wanted to fight the 16. Look at this. <laughs> Nothing like kicking a gate. You know what I realized? I just realized literally every fight that No Jumper has are all fake. They're all of them are fake. Maybe one or two might be real. One or two. But the majority of them are fake. They're not really fighting each other. But because Adam, Adam 16 realized, whoa. If I have fights on my show or I get a lot of views, it's a good recipe. If you get people to agree to, uh, you know, come up with a fight, then you get views, you get numbers. Uh, that reminds me of, um, uh, American Chola admitting that he was going to create a fake beef with a uh, Kumpa writer. He was on the, the foods community. Now, I wonder if uh, Icon was in on it also. I wonder if Icon knew that th this was the joke that they were going to do. And, and if that's the case, then Foo's community is just as bad as uh, Gil, just as bad as Adam-16, because these people literally create fake fights and make you believe that these people are tough. I think we've already proven that many of these people are not tough. Many of these people, you know, try to fake their tough. And I think this is, this is just another example of, a, you know, a fake fight. Somebody trying to pretend that something's happening, but it's not. Like from what I heard, uh, this guy, I think it's AD and the, that, that, that China Mac guy. I think uh, Adam already even admitted that their fight was fake. Bro, I'm just telling you, bro. Right, so AD comes out and talks some sense into Milk74, convinces him that he's a dumbass. And so Milk74 leaves and goes and uploads this. And this is like his biggest, most famous. Like that's, that's, that's another part right there. Why would you tell somebody to put off the camera, turn off the camera because you're packing? Why, why would you admit to something like that? <laughs> this is why I say everything that these people do is fake. They fake to lie to everybody. They pretty much just want to lie to you. They just want to tell you that, you know, it's crazy over here. We get into fights. We almost come to near death experiences. And, um, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But from looking at this so far, this is just an example of how all these guys act and how they got they like to fake everything because they know that people want to watch a lot of fake shit. Well, I mean, for them, it's not fake. These guys do sell it. But at the end of the day, there's nothing going on. These guys are all fucking lying. All right. So check out the rest of this on his channel. Uh, let me give him another shout out. It's going to be point and shoot, point and shoot. Check out his his channel. Uh, he really does. He really does break things down a lot better, and uh, definitely go check him out when you guys get a chance. Let me see what's going on. Let me see. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's take some calls. Let's take some calls. Um, I just want to make sure you guys can see me okay, right? I am not lagging. Let me know in the comments if I'm lagging.
All right, I'm going to assume I am not lagging. All right, let's go. Let's see. Let me uh, put up this number. No, actually, you know what? No, let me actually download this thing right here. You know what? One thing I do want to clarify because some of these callers uh, assume that uh, I'm marvelous in the sense where I'm going to uh, talk to you personally one on one. I don't do that. Um, marvelous does that. And uh, how he does it, I don't even know because I think that's pretty tough. Uh, so that being said, you're not going to get a response like the way you get from Marvelous. Oh, you know what? Shout out to Chicano too. Uh, I had a very good call with him. I think it was, uh, I want to say either Sunday. Might have been Sunday or Saturday. But uh, shout out to Chicano too for uh, taking my two calls. Appreciate that. All right. All right. So we should be good. Let me just connect here. <sighs> Okay, 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 okay. Give me a second here. All right, guys. The number should be up there. Until then, uh, let me read some of these uh, comments over here. Let's see. Brad Pitbull. Hey. Yes, get a belly ring for that hood. Okay. I'm not sure. Tamales. Milk comes to town to sell his peas. <laughs> yeah, right. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? What up, Norby's? It's the snowman. How you doing? Good, snowman. How you feeling, man? You feeling better? Better, man. Smoking on some uh, law right now. Just chilling and doing the podcast. Hey, that's what's up. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Hey, one thing. Milk seven four. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. Um. um are you familiar with uh, the rich? So man, you're you're breaking up on us. Can you move to a place where where you might get a better reception? Hello. No man. No man. Uh oh. Hello. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. With, hello. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you. Are you familiar with the Rich at Heart podcast? The Rich at Heart podcast? No, no, I am not. Uh, what, what's that about? So that's um, Alex Alonzo Street TV. It's a girl, Mariah. She's half black, half Mexican from San Pedro. And Munchie B, who's a blood from Inglewood. Yes. So they were talking the other day, uh, Munchie B, about authentic rappers that really were in the streets. And he dropped a little gem that his dad uh, was from the same neighborhood B Real was from and oh. actually gave B Real his nickname. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty interesting. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that uh, is interesting. Fast, fast forward, um, when Milk, before Milk went on No Jumper, he advised with Munchie B if it would be like a good look, a good thing. And I think at, as far as the culture uh, for representation of the Hoover side, uh, Inglewood wasn't represented on No Jumper because of their affiliation with other rappers. 
So that's why Milk decided to go on No Jumper uh, as uh, to uh, give representation for the Fig Side community. Oh, okay. So you don't believe that he uh, he sold out his audience uh, after for so many months saying that he would never appear and pretty much talking shit about Adam 16 since then? He definitely did, but it was for like a bigger picture, you know, because there is no representation of the, uh, you know, Figaro community on the Internet. Yeah. I guess they're, they're even saying they get blackballed as well uh from the industry so it was like a bigger picture move i guess he he did definitely uh you know win against his morals but i think they were looking at a bigger picture at for representation uh somebody from their community Mm. okay that's a good way of seeing it right there i I wouldn't i didn't even know that he was even trying to go at it at that at that angle honestly yeah, check out Munchie B uh, Street TV. Um, Mariah, she's from San Pedro. She's half black, half Mexican. She always wants to uh, get in uh, touch, well, from what I see, more of her Mexican roots because uh, her mom is Chicana. So yeah. I think that's a dope little look. And I would, you know, uh, love to see her on Rodium Radio one day. Uh, let me get a, what was the name again for her uh, channel? Rich at Heart podcast. Rich at Heart podcast. That's on YouTube, right? That's on YouTube. Yes, yeah, Alex Alonzo's podcast, Street TV. He's got Munchie B and oh. her, and she's a fan favorite. She's an author. Uh, she grew up in San Pedro, so she has somewhat of an interesting story. And she's an interesting. Uh, you know, figure on YouTube. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I see a Rich at Heart podcast right here. Uh, yeah, it's, pr- it's pretty cool. It's picking up traction. Uh, you know, it's like a fan favorite, you know, type of show. All right, all right. Now, the, does she get too political or she just gets on, uh, she actually touches on other subjects? They get, they, it gets pretty interesting. I think you should check it out because they uh, have like a certain... Uh, point of view, a mother's perspective, you yeah. know, like you could still be a hood uh, person, but a mother as well. So yeah. she definitely gives perspective. Like if her son asks her to go to the Delamo mall, it's a no, um, really? you know, you know, cause of the, yeah. Cause of what they talk about, like the Delamo mall incidents and stuff like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So I think that's pretty cool. She's giving like a mother's perspective. Okay, that's good to know. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Let's see what's up. It's always cool yeah, to definitely. see different uh, perspectives in the different areas of the of the city, man, or the county in this case. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, milk milk did no did no worse than what Compa Raider did. You know, he went on there. He looked a fool. He looked a mess. Yeah. Uh, milk. You know, he he went on there against his morals. But you know he didn't he didn't do too much he didn't act out of character yeah. just for the camera if that makes sense. Since uh, you seem to be a viewer of his uh, platform, uh, how how did he respond? Has he respond back to his audience about his visit to No Jumper? I just heard Munchie B side. I haven't heard his side yet, but uh, he has a cool little story too. There was some guy on YouTube. He does like prison genre stuff. Yeah. He always talks about busting cheek. And he was the one that interviewed uh, Milk because uh, I guess Milk was a he was born white but adopted by an all black family that lived on Figueroa. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't know those things. Yeah, but, uh, but- I got. It seems like I got to uh, do a little bit more research on on uh, Milk because uh, this guy right here, you know, he seemed very not not disappointed because he said he wasn't really a supporter. But he was interested to see how much he talked about Adam. Yeah, I heard of him because they asked. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Flacco from No Jumper. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's the guy with the, that's the guy the 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 guy from Colorado, right? He's from Colorado or from he, he's Georgia? from like Oklahoma, but really Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, that guy. So him and uh, the the point of view they. 
I guess they asked him about him, and he says he has no recollection of who he is. Obviously, he does, but it was a slight uh, towards that one guy, one shot or whatever his name is, yeah. like saying he doesn't know who he is because I guess there's some sort of, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, YouTube or um, what's the other one, uh, like some sort of beef on, on the YouTube. Yeah. Ah, well, that that does happen. Okay, all right. Well, and the Reddit, Reddit too. Yeah, I guess it gets with no jumper. There's like a Reddit world too, where it gets pretty deep in there as well. Yeah, I I've never got into the Reddit stuff. I mean, I heard, I do hear that it uh it does get uh, it's a good platform to I guess reach out more people. I'm not too sure how they use it. I mean, I think it's kind of like an Instagram thing, or even a TikTok thing. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it gets crazy. I haven't checked it out, but I just hear about it, uh, cause, um, what the no jumper guys say. But yeah, I guess Flacco and your guy, uh, what, what is his name? I'm sorry, one shot or one, what is it? Which one? Oh, oh, the, the, the guy. One that uploaded oh, the, the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One, one shot. Uh, actually, I'll tell, you, I'll, t- I'll tell you right him now. him and Flacco. Yeah, I guess him and Flacco have tension. Oh really? I get it because I I seen this guy. This guy pretty much goes after everybody from uh, No Jumper, and I think that for me it's kind of entertaining watching him just put pretty much just shit on everybody on that show. Yeah, man, uh, I would love to get uh, once you check out Mariah. I'd love to get her on Rodium Radio. I think uh, it'll be dope for the culture because she's always, you know, if you look at her, she looks black, but. Yeah. Her mom is Mexican. Growing up in San Pedro, that was very common uh, for, you know, uh, yeah. a mix, you know, Mexican and black, uh, always in our school systems and, and you know, yeah. in the community as well. So that that was always like something uh, interesting dynamic. Yeah, see, definitely. You know? I mean, we've always had, uh, I, I think we usually refer to them as black Blacksicans. Blacksicans, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, Dave, man, thanks for uh, sharing her, sharing her with me. You know, putting in your two cents about milk, because uh, you you pretty much yeah. carried out a part that I didn't really know. Do you think it was a win or a loss for him? I think it's a win because he's gonna get he's gonna get those viewers, and he might it might have even been a job interview. Oh. Now would that be a good thing if he should, if he started working for uh, the sixteen? I mean, it'd be it'd be interesting because of the people he has in the uh, on his channels right now. Uh, you know, they're from uh, the Crenshaw district area, yeah. so now they're going to have the Figueroa district uh, area working there. So it's going to be all under one roof. I don't think that's really been seen. So it'll be it'll be interesting for the culture. Yeah, you know what? You you got a good point there because. Uh... You have uh, certain podcasters that wouldn't work, like people that are from Northern California or from Texas or from Arizona. They only want to keep it in-house. Um, I mean, you do have No Jumper having a multicultural uh, environment. Almost, you could kind of say, like, yeah. the representation of what L.A. is, a melting pot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah they definitely need HR, though, in the building because... Man, it could get crazy. But I mean, I'm not gonna lie. As far as the rasa that works there, uh, I'm not. I've never really been very impressed at all. Same. You're right. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not a fan of anybody besides Rhodium Radio out here. You know. So Thank you. Keep, keep pushing for the culture. Keep doing uh, the good work, and uh, yeah, let's take the next caller. All right, Norby. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. So that's a that's a good perspective right there. He is a a watcher of milk. Uh, he did break it down about uh, milk. Possibly did that just to be a representative of his neighborhood. Caller, your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. How are you doing? Good, good. Hey, uh, I saw that interview. It was marvelous. I mean, the show, right? Wait, say and that you again. guys talk about like. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I like the shows that you did with Marvelous. Because um, you guys talk about trippy stuff. 
Like, oh, oh Marvelous Minds. Yeah. I can. Hello? Caller. You there? Hello? Hello? Try to move somewhere where you get good reception. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I could hear you. I could hear you. Okay. No, I just like the shows you do with uh, Marvelous. Can you guys talk about like kind of creepy stuff that's out there, right? Yeah. Um, you guys aren't taking guests right now, though, right? Because no. Because this is one guy. Mm-hmm. No, okay, okay. Well, can I plug somebody? Um, yeah, his name is Bruce McDonald. Now, he talks about some crazy far-out stuff, so... Yeah. Um, if you're not really into that stuff, then uh, you probably shouldn't look into his research. Or he Bruce, puts out videos like on Bruce McDonald, Mac, right? Mac, 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 Mac McDonald, M A C. So you have to, yeah, M A C D O N A L D. Now, uh, the reason I think you got to be careful because he said on the show that hey, like if the average person in North America hears my show, they'll probably check into the insane asylum <laughs> because he talks about like crazy stuff that's out there right oh he's a white um, guy huh no no he, yeah he's, he's just no, but that dude, I, I, res- I respect that rock though because that guy he's from canada bro and he moved to costa rica wow. and he set up like this thing no but this guy this guy learned spanish he learned a culture so he's not like one of those white people that just goes there and takes advantage of the culture no this guy actually like I respect this guy, but um, All right, just well, some guy. If you guys want to check him out, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna check it out. I see, I see a few of his videos right now. All right, thanks, thanks for that check one. Check out. Who else? Sorry. Who else? Oh well, yeah, check. I would recommend you look him up like on Bitchu and Rumble because a lot of this those kind of censored. <laughs> oh okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, all right. I'll check that out on Rumble then. Yeah, because I can see there's okay, not too many uh, there's not too many options in here in YouTube. All right, I'll check yeah, it out. Yeah, he's, he's, um, and can I move on to the to the other stuff, the achievement? <laughs> oh um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, go ahead. I heard, so, dude, remember last week I called you about AC and the neighborhood council? Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. look, I look more into it, more, more, more into it, and I guess I don't know if he quit or if he got fired or whatever, but he's no longer with them. Really? It said on the internet, it said that he, well, like I said, I don't know if they quit or whatever, but it says that he's no longer with them because they want to replace him. Oh. Um, and it's right there in black and white, so if you guys want to look it up, um, you, do you have it's like on a... the minutes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm talking kind of fast. Um, so you have to go on the Neighborhood Council website, the neighborhood, North Hollywood Neighborhood East. Um. You have to look up the minutes from February, and it says there that they want to replace him what? because I guess he wait, hasn't been showing wait, up wait, to wait, the wait, meeting. I'm sorry. Well, what side do I go for that? Yeah, let me let me get my laptop, bro. Um, hold on, give me two seconds. <laughs> sure. Um. Okay. So it's it's n h n e n c dot org. So that means North Hollywood, Northeast Neighborhood Council. North Hollywood, Northeast Council. Neighborhood Council. And then once you're there, you go to agenda. Are, are you doing this right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually doing it right now. Cause, uh, so you go to agenda and then minutes. Minutes. Okay. And then... And then you go to the meeting in February. So it was like the latest one. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I could. Uh, Are you? Give me one second here. Give me one second. Let's see. Yeah. Because remember last week I called you about it. Yeah. I just yeah. kind of glanced at it. I, I didn't even like look into it because I was doing, I was busy with other stuff over there. And I just thought it said that he was absent for that meeting in February. But no, no, no. It was for him to you know to be out of there permanently <laughs> let me see if i can make that bigger for the audience to see okay so where am i going here in the minutes um go to seven seven okay here we are seven uh discussion and possible action to vacate the below listed boarded seat 
Due to excessive absence that violates the North Hollywood Northeast Neighborhood Council absence policy and compliance policy of the uh, in the NH any NC bylaws article five section seven and article uh, I said look numbers. at the name though <laughs> look at the name though what it says okay resident. <laughs> Representative stakeholder A32027 currently held by G. Tejada. G. Tejada. <laughs> Gil Tejada. Gil Tejada. Gil. But Absent. he hasn't announced it that he's quit. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Sorry. No, no, go. no, I'm just saying he hasn't announced that he quit, has he? As far as I know, he doesn't even talk about it. I don't know. You know what? That's the thing. He does what Blue Dildo does. He he pretty much uh, makes his video private. So we really wouldn't know if he has announced it. But wow, thank you for uh, telling us about that. Gil is being taken out because of absence. He does not give a fuck about his community. That's, exactly. That's crazy, right? <laughs> you made that kind of commitment. You say all this and that, and then all of a sudden, you don't even show up to the motherfucker. Wow. Wow. That's wild. That is wild. Yeah. One more thing, if you don't mind. Or no, no, no. Go ahead, man. You, you, you did. Uh, <laughs> you, you brought us some good. Uh, hey, I'm just saying. Some good uh, facts over here. Because, look, it, it, like, they think that their listeners are like some stupid people, but. We got smart mother, sorry, smart people out here, you know, yes. actually doing reading research. Yes. So, eh, keep, I, I like to know this because you're keeping that fool on his toes, making sure he covers his track. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's because um, of thing, people like you that do do the research and, you know, let us know about it. You know, that helps us, you know, show the people what kind of people these people are. They're parasites and leeches, right? Yes, um, sir. But, oh, okay. This is like my last point. Yeah. And it's a, uh, I have a legitimate question. What, what do you get? What do you have against Bruno, bro? Like, you know what? Him, you mentioned his name. The only thing I dislike yeah. is that when he was at No Jumper, he had, um, he had that comedian, Andrew, what the fuck's his name? Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz. He had him on yeah. there. He had him on there. And he was, uh, he was, uh, talking about, uh, uh, a moment at a movie set. Okay. Where he saw, in his in his uh, words, he saw a bunch of Mexicans there, and I guess he took mm-hmm. it upon himself to like roast these guys, you know, with the every like every single word that you could think of, you know, wet bag, beaners, every fucking name you could fucking think of to do a kind of a Mexican. Here you have Duno mm-hmm. sitting right next to him. Listening to this, knowing damn well his mom's an immigrant, knowing damn well that her mom has to suffer through that racist shit here in L.A. And here he is just laughing at with him, laughing with him, laughing with him. I'll tell you this much, man. If I saw Andrew, if Andrew was sitting across the way from me, no, not even right next to me, literally, because he was sitting right next to him. If Andrew was sitting right next to me, that would that would have made me cause a fight that, you know. Might have given No Jumper more views because I would have fucking jumped on him. I would have jumped on him because I would not let some white guy talk like that in front of me. I wouldn't expect any of you guys to let some white dude literally talk like that in front of you. I expect all of you to do something. And Duno let me down that day by just sitting there and laughing. Damn. And this is the crazy um, part. This is the crazy part. I give some credit to Adam because Adam actually checked. He actually checked that Andrew guy. And he told him, hey, uh, <laughs> you're, you're Mexican, right? And Andrew's like, oh, no, I'm not Mexican. Because even Adam was shocked that this guy had the balls to talk like that, especially in front of Duno, who is a Mexican. For, I mean, if he even shocked Adam... And here you have Duno like laughing with this guy saying all these racist things about our people. You know, people say, oh, you, we can't, what, what is it that we can't take a joke anymore? You know, we get upset because people say racist things about us. Like, we're too sensitive. It's not about being sensitive. It's about having pride of your community 
realizing the fact that these people still look at us the same way as as the workers, as the uneducated, as the you should be lucky to be working for us. So it's not about being sensitive. It's about having pride in community, pride in your tribe, pride in your neighborhood. And, and that's and that's my grief. If if ever Duno gets that same opportunity, I would I would respect him again if he fucking actually came up to that dude and checked him. Call it. Caller, you still there? Caller. Hello. You still there, man? Try to move somewhere. Where... Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. Uh, this is what I want to wrap up with because I know you got other callers. Um, um, you know who's Dash Matter, right? The guy that's been handling all those weird allegations from Nickelodeon. Oh, that big heavy set guy, right? Yeah, that piece of, anyways, yeah. I want to say that yeah. was, um, I saw an interview with Gabriel Inglésas, remember that guy? Yeah, he yeah. That, too. The, that fluffy guy, and yeah. And he said that, he said that, um, they made him dress in drag back like then, so it's kind of like, with Duno, bro, it's kind of like an embarrassment ritual, ritual. I don't know if you heard of that yeah, phrase, yeah. right? yeah. So that's what I think is going on, and some of these people, they just got no, they got no heart, bro, like, they'll sell themselves off for money. Pretty much. And that's what I think is happening right here with that guy, unfortunately. But that's the way I see it right now. And that's what he said at Dash Schneider. Well, I don't know if it was Dash Schneider, but somebody, Nick, told him, hey, you got to dress in drag when he was on All That. You remember All That, the, the comedy show back in the day, the 90s? Man, I got to look so, back at that. But uh, oh, yeah, but I wouldn't but be yeah. surprised, dude. I wouldn't be surprised. That wouldn't shock me at all. Well, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what was going through my mind when you talked about Duno right now yeah so that's all I got bro thank you for taking my call and, oh, yeah, hey, thank you too for it. sharing that information with us I appreciate uh, your research thank you yeah yeah man there's a lot of smart motherfuckers out here hey. Con- contrary to what the other fools say exactly hey, thank you Norris. thank Have you night, bro you too man beautiful call beautiful call Gil come on man how are you gonna run for a seat and then not show up for it very good I mean the guy, the, the the hardworking American, you know, part of his, loves his community, doesn't show up for it, though. Uh, okay, so we'll wait for another call. Meantime, let's uh, read some of these. There morning. Okay, we got an anonymous. Let's see where this goes. Anonymous, your name and where are you calling from? Are you John Wayne? Is this me? I'm Juan Wayne. Juan Wayne. Blue dildo is a little short munch again. Hey. Facts. And I didn't even know they stacked shit that high. <laughs> you know, blue dildo hasn't stepped out of his house from since September of 1997. Uh, I, I heard he did the Elon Musk and decided to move into his warehouse. That little prick. He's a little munchkin, little looky thing. Mm. He sure is. All right. I just want to call you to tell you that Blue Dildo is a little short munchkin, and I didn't know they stacked shit that high. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that call. All right. Have a good night, boy. You too, man. You too. Thanks. You know, I like those calls, you know. They just want to drop some information like that. Okay, that's cool. It did get me wondering, anonymous, but uh, hey, he said his piece. All right, let's go back to these um, comments. Uh, let's see. Sickle1904 says, stop lying, Norby, Norby's laughing out loud. Don't bell. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Yo. This is this is this is Gil, short for Gildo. <laughs> rhymes with rhymes with my favorite fruit, Dildo. <laughs> but um <laughs> I'm, I'm calling from um from North Hollywood. 
right next to West Hollywood, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wink, yeah. wink. Hey. But yeah, um, I want to say hi to all the all the listeners, the watchers. You know, okay. what's what's up, my my niggas? Because uh, it's okay because my wife and my wife's boyfriend um have okayed it. You know. Oh. It's like you know. Yeah. He, the... He's the big bull. He's oh. The big bull. He comes to my he comes to my house sometimes, and um, the the ring camera was on, so we had to make the story like we had a beef. But oh my goodness, he, he's too big. He knows how to fight. It's like. Like, you know, I was only in YA, you know, where um, I only fight girls. You could, you could look at my paperwork. So, hey. you know, I'm just I'm just trying to say, you know, good night and uh, ciao. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Know, you. Thank, hey, thank you for calling. Uh, thank you. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs> peace. peace out. Bye. Bye. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Gil from North Hollywood. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Hey, ¿qué onda? I'm over here in Pennsylvania. I'm over here in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So it was Pennsylvania, the PA. Wow, bro. What time is it over there? Eh, no mames, güey. Pues sales bien tarde, güey. Aquí son las una de la mañana. Holy crap. My, my bad, man. You know what? A lot of people went on and... Um, for instance, uh, ODM went on on his podcast. He usually does Monday. So I kind of want to just... Let him go for an hour, and then I would just jump in afterwards. Oh, what I no, I just, uh, I was just calling the, uh, for este, la, la pinche episode que hicieron tú y Tony with the wigs on, vato. Ya los bien pancheros, Tony. Les quedó, yo. I seen, I was like, yo, Tony don't got no pelo. And all of a sudden, that vato showed up with the wig and shit. I had to make sure, homes, because I was like, you and Marijuana and shit. So I had to go back, like, this vato's pelo, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ay, Dios mío. Oh, Dios mío. Oh, Dios mío. I mean, what, did the hair look good? Because, you know, his hair looked a lot better than mine. I think I could, I needed to comb mine a little bit more, but, uh, Mira, a ti te quedó este, este, you know, the, los pinches mexicanos que be like, si quema, cuz, that's what you look like, what the, with that pinche, <laughs> with that little mo, uh, the Mexican redneck mole and shit. That's right, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny. That, that was my first time ever wearing a wig, too, by the way, and uh, I'm glad uh, a lot of people enjoyed it. I'm glad they had fun with it. I mean, uh, all credit goes to Tony, of course. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the guest. <laughs> no, see more. I agree with you, man. You yeah, should make more like that. You show up with some like different pelucas or some shit like that. You know that that's that's and that that's why I, I like what Tony's doing. Like he, he consistently tries to come up with new ways to like for us to show you guys things. So you guys can laugh because no. at the end of the day, we just want to make you guys laugh. Yeah, that's the whole point about the whole thing. What though? Because I was calling too because every time when he does the road rolling radio, I tried to call in, but that should be packed with calls and shit. I never get through. Nah, same here, man. Same here. And I, and I worked there. <laughs> Oh, see, man, I know. I'll be seeing you all the times with the news with Norby, especially the one you did, what was it, last night, with the chick with the two vaginas? I oh, was like, no, my man. Yeah, bro. What, what, what do you think? Was it okay that she had two boyfriends and she she assigned them a hoe? Okay, so that goes uh, right there. I know my way I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pun intended. <laughs> no, no me meto ahí. Either or, even if she has another assigned, short, assigned pussies for each other, no, but that's, that's still a no, no. That's wild, huh? Porque did you see the one too with the ruka that got two heads, and she just got married with the vato, and she got two heads. The they uh, they were born like that, twins. Yeah, yeah. that that's wild, dude. Did I can't. You see that one? Can you imagine what, what kind of dome this guy's getting? That's what I said. What the one mouth gets tired, switch to the other one, yo. Like, can you, that shit be, it'd be awesome shit, man. Pero, that's, that's, that's too you know. trippy for me, man. That is too trippy for me. I, I mean, that, that's too intense, man. I mean. 
I mean, I think that's all good and fun if you do shrooms or acid and shit, you know? You be on some trips. <laughs> For real. Oh, shit. That would be, yeah, yeah. You'd probably need some of that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I thought I was just calling this shit. Just, you know, I, I like what you do. And Thank you. I like watching you with the with the uh, Norby's news and shit with Tony. I appreciate I'll that. I'll be watching you and, uh, and Marvelous. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate the support, man. I appreciate the support, man, because you guys. No doubt. Uh, Mm -hmm. Tony, I've been listening to that Vato when, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I never heard of Tony A. the Wizard. I never listened to rap or like that. Yeah. You guys first been doing the solo Chicano rap. Yeah. That's when I started listening to like Cali music. Yeah. And then that's when I started listening to Tupac and then Biggie and then all that other stuff porque yo nací en México en oh, Toluca okay alright came over here I was three or four años so I didn't know English till I was like in fifth fifth grade that's when I really learned English alright alright so right. then that's when I started picking up into the Americanized music y ya y ya después aprendí de todas esas pendejadas y cuando escuché que Tony A was interviewing Mr. Mr. Shadow. Oh, okay. When we interviewed Mr. Shadow, that's when I learned about Rodian Radio. Ah, okay. And ever since then, I've been keeping uh, I've been keeping up with Tony and everything that he's been doing with the podcast. All right, all right. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Have you ever Have you ever checked out the documentary that's on the the free version that's on his uh, YouTube page? Oh no, nah, he got one. Yeah, yeah, check out the documentary on 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 Tony Vision. Uh, it's dope. You you if you get a lot more insight about what what Tony was involved in also back then. It's it's a really good. Uh, it's really cool. Check it out when you get a chance, and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, but I got you porque I saw the interview that he did with the with the with the Morenos and shit. I don't know what what uh, what platform it was, but he was talking about some of the stuff that he did. Mm-hmm. And he was with DJ Kane or something like that, wasn't he? Oh, cocaine. Yeah, he was with cocaine. Yeah, Simon con ese vato. I seen the interview that he did right there, shit, and then I learned a little bit more of what he did. Yeah, that but, was a good one. Yeah, I see when I seen that and then that also made me go back to uh go look at the high C shit and all that other stuff that he did. Yeah. And yo, Vato, I give him his flowers and respect because back then nobody was really doing it for Latinos and shit over there in the West Coast. Because after Max. so many years I looked it up yeah. and then I seen it and I was like, yo, that Vato deserves his respect and his flowers. Like Definitely. Oh, yeah, anybody can do it. Yeah. But back then, when you really had to freaking visualize and imagine the sound that you wanted to make, and then you had to make it happen. Yeah. Ahora, you could go on the computer, any little bullshit, boom, ya te sale ahí, no importa. Very and true. anybody can be a rap artist, and you know, David. Shit, I even got a computer and a, and a mic in my house, and I make my so called bootleg music. <laughs> hey, that's what's up. <laughs> All right. Why not, right? Why not? But, see, well, this kid, sometimes we have to do la neta. Most of the times when I listen to Chicano rap or, or the Mexican rap from Cali, yeah, they're all saying the same shit, but with a different beat. Mm. They're all saying, sur this, sur that. Yeah. But yo, talk about some other stuff, really. Yeah. Like, I want to know what is it like in a normal motherfucking day in Cali. Facts. All they talk Facts. about is black, the black. And, and they nobody ever... And uh, nobody ever is going to make it big, really, really big in the industry from Cali, Chicano rap wise. They're not. Because all they do is make black music for the black. Yeah, exactly. And and, and People over here on my side, over here in Pennsylvania, we can't relate to that shit. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why we fuck with Little Rob, the summer night, the neighborhood music, uh, Mr. Shadow, uh, and Ray Del West. That album, Ray the West, that shit was fire. All right, all right. Mr. Little cool. One, Night Owl. Uh, that's like the only artist that we really listen to up here. Yeah. Because all the, oh, and 
I don't care if your people in here that are listening right now, they're going to get heated, but my favorite guy to listen to is South Park Mexican. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because of his, you know, his uh, charges of, you know, being a chomo. That, See, that... But that's the thing. I always say this. What the man does in his personal life or whatever that man does, that's his business. I listen yeah. to the artist. Yeah. I listen to Carl, uh, to South Park Mexican. I can give a fuck less what Carlos Coy does. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got all about, I, I bought all his albums. Yeah. I mean, well, at least now we know Pennsylvania, they're, they're, they're bumping them. Uh, you know what? I mean, it, it, and that's the thing, dude, man. We, we, out here in LA, unfortunately, a lot of shit happens and, and we got to, not allow individuals like that to be known. And if anything, we would, we would rather see them stay locked up and uh, pay for what they did. No, Simon, pero también, I looked up a lot of shit on South Park shit, and there's a lot of shifty shit that went into that case right there. I agree with them the, that he should not have had no freaking kid with a 13-year-old, but she was working at a strip club, you know? Allegedly. And the other thing is, <laughs> allegedly, of course. Yeah. Pero también la otra pendejada es que you should never be around little kids, especially when you got a name like him. Because yeah. he had millions before he went in. Yeah. And all the, the time, all he wanted was money. Pero, you know, we'll wait for him to come out and address that shit. Pero I still fucked with his music. That new one he came out with, the uh, the Devil's Mansion, the yeah. new album. Yeah. Bro, that shit was fire, homie. You got to listen to that one. But I got to be honest with you, man. If I had to call it, I would say SPM would probably be one of those guys that parties with Diddy. Uh, did he do it? <laughs> hey, hey, what's it called? Call, hey, we're, we're going to go to the next caller, man. Because uh, <laughs> we got to get to his meeting. Hey, hey. Hablamos. Hablamos, man. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Shout out Pennsylvania. Hey. That's pretty dope, man. Pennsylvania. I mean, geez, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, like you said. It's, it's, it's dope to hear that uh, they're watching us out there. Interesting conversation. He he gave a lot of insight on what the people, the uh, the raza of Pennsylvania, you know, listen to what they look for, and he said it right there. He said that uh, we're looking for the uh, day in the life, you know, because as far as like Little Rob, he would explain his most popular songs is pretty much explaining a day. Caller, your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Hey. Hey, what's up, Norby? What's up, man? How you doing tonight? I'm fucking chilling, bro. I'm chilling with the homies. That's what's up. Hey, wait. What's up? Yeah. So I'm gonna run non-biased, right? Okay. Um. So I don't know. If you seen the um the interview with Bozo and Blue Dildo, right? So there's an interview. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, I. Nah. I glanced Nahuita, at it. Nahuita Bozo, bro. Nahuita Bozo. I thought Bozo was on a different level. Really? He's on the same level with Blue Dildo. Huh? Elaborate on that one, please. Well, there's no need to elaborate, bro. I fucking... I thought the homie, the homie Bozo was a homie. Yeah. The homie Bozo from Pico. Pico Nuevo. Pico... Not Pico Viejo, right? Yeah. Pico Nuevo. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, this fool was like, all right, cool. This fool's a homie. But he wrote, he wrote the program. But then again, he goes over here with this fucking, this, bro, I'm, I don't want really to say clown because clown is a word that gets thrown around a lot, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, this, this fool, this fool, uh, haters will. Yeah. Fuck it. All he does is get little kids, like, pumped up. Because, to be honest, fool, Ain't no real homies looking up to this fool. Ain't no real homies following this fool. Nobody's following this fool. This fool was a has been when he was uh, following a what's his name, bro? Somebody from Homoland or Romoland. <laughs> bro, I, I know yeah, I know yeah. who this guy was. This fool was always a ranker. Yeah. This fool was always a bitch. Yeah. Palabra, this fool was always a bitch. Yeah. 
on his mother's life, this was always a bitch, right? Dang. I know who he is. Yeah, no, this real shit, bro. All right. You can look it up. Uh, his, his name was uh, Blue Devil Entertainment ever since back then, right? Yeah. So you can look it up. Um, and then he had his his other rappers behind him. But that's neither here nor there, right? Yeah. This whole sports, some gang memorabilia that he shouldn't be sporting, bro. Really? Right? Oh, 100%, bro. And I don't know that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know why Bozo backed him up. Yeah, this fool gets smacked for that shit, bro. Because the homie never put in work. He state the whole, as far as I heard. Yeah, the homie never did nothing. I mean, if he's a homie, right? Yeah, the homie he came from Calexico. He's a paisa. Let's keep it a thousand. Let's keep it a buck. All right. He grew up his whole life ever since he was sixteen years old as a paisa. Yeah, that's not even a homie, dog. You know what I mean? Mm. And for for him to come out here talking shit. Talking about like, oh, I was mad cop with mad Glock or whatever record, this and that. Yeah, who's a lame dog? Damn, on the serial, and on the serial, uh, uh, ice as well too. But on some real shit, fool, this fool needs to be smacked, dog. Hey, it's but bound to happen. That's all you fool. Smack that fool, dog. As soon as he th- he comes out of his uh, warehouse, <laughs> it shows up to places. Well, where's he at? I have no idea. I don't know his address, so I wouldn't I wouldn't know where to tell you where he's at. But uh, I know it's a warehouse yeah. with three rooms that he likes to show off all his uh, toys, like he's Mister Criminal. Oh yeah, that doesn't that that doesn't matter to any, to any homeboy. That that's any homie that doesn't matter. Well, you know that you know what? Another thing is that he always talks shit about or segregation, right? He's about like, oh, bite how this. Homie, this black, this, but the home that fool's a paisa dog. The mm. homies laugh at this fool dog. He's a paisa dog. Shut up. Hey. And and it is what it is, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's just the situation that goes on in that world, right? What world? The world that you're talking about. I get not kidding, fool. <laughs> <Just a joke. laughs> Hey, wait, that way? Like, yeah. hey, on some real shit, though, fool. Hey, haters was a bitch, dog. I mean, we and, see, yeah, and, you're uh, right. I said that too before. Yeah. And, uh, este, um, el way, uh, como se llama? El, uh, el bozo. Yeah. Bozo, damn. We, I we this fool. That fool's all bad. For, I mean, not, he's not all bad. Let me rephrase that. Yeah. Nah, we thought some minutes away, you know what I mean? For yeah. fucking backing up this fucking lane, dog. Yeah. And uh, I would love, I would love to smack this fool, dog. If you could get in contact with him, let him know, fool. I'm, I'm ready for that fucking. Let me, let me run it with that fool, dog. <laughs> hey, I think you're gonna have to wait in line because I'm pretty sure there's quite a few of us waiting there. Hey, would uh, on some real shit? Would you get down with that fool, dog, or what? On the real shit. On yeah. some real shit. Yeah. On some yeah. gang shit. Yeah. I've already. Gang shit, you yeah. know what? I went uh, not on some gang shit because I'm not in the gang. But uh no 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 I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. go back on some gangster would you run in with that for what oh yeah I even went on his live chat and I and I told him like give me an address where you want me to show up yeah like and I'll show up by myself ah uh, he ignored me and what he say he ignored me he ignored you yeah this whole live chat was literally telling him that I was calling him out completely ignored the whole fucking thing. Damn, go figure, fool. That fool from some Calexico fucking Ellen, not Ellen Empire, but some uh, high desert shit, bro. Yeah, he, he would hide out there. He would hide out there. He would have to hide out there. No, he, that's, that's where he's from, bro. That's where he got all his continent from. All his continent from and, uh, and that's all he does, bro. I mean, he's like he's most I get right. it, bro. But damn, at the same time, you got to you gotta show some respect, fool. You, really you can't do. be a bitch like that and hide out. You can't. You can't. And it's I call this fool. I call this fool. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy, man. Hey, real quick. Go for it. What do you think about hood socks? You know what? I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm I'm not really much of a of a watcher of hood stock only because uh I have this thing. I mean, he has this thing where he fucking shits on his collars, you know. I don't know if he still does that. He, he says, Hey fucker, fuck you, you know. I don't know. That's that's just. Oh, that's, you, don't, you don't like that? No, nah, I mean, you know what? I got way too much respect for all of you guys. You know, to like just talk nah, to you like but that. Well, no, but 
I think that that's that's where you mistook your fool. Like like um, Hillstock se iba pesado with the homies, and and uh, Blue Dildo he thinks he's a shit. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. that's the difference. Bro, when you got different different. <laughs> no, mami, I'm not I'm not even going to say. I, I think it's good. Uh, ¿Cómo se diferenciar, güey? You gotta differentiate from them. Oh yeah. Like Hillstock says, uh. Hey, fuck you fools, but I mean, like, Blue Dildo says, like, hey, fuck you fools in the real way. He, he really thinks he's a, he's a shit, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. Blue Dildo's, a, like, legit a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's real shit, bro. Like, it's palabra. facts. No, it's, it's facts. It's facts. I know. I, I yeah. believe I he, believe that like, also. He, he, he thinking, like, I don't know for for what reason he thinks he got out with the homie from, uh, from Alley Boys, and then he gets in, he goes out with um, uh, the homie from Sickness. I don't know. This was this was smoked out, bro. This was about to get slapped the fuck out, dog. And he, well, that's why he hides. His time is time. because I mean, like he beats it with everybody, bro, from Orange County. I don't know why he does that. You know, the funny part is, is that uh, this guy talks so much shit about Chicano rappers. Talks all this shit. You guys yeah. are broke. You guys are stupid. You guys are lame. Yeah. All you Chicano rappers have no fucking careers. You you guys are fucking. Yeah. You guys are poor. <laughs> all you guys don't know how to make money. And that's literally all his fucking guests at the 200 gender neutral boys. Maybe yeah, it makes he, sense. He, how do yeah, you talk shit about these people and their careers and you invite them? And how are these guys that stupid enough to go on his show? Knowing that this guy pretty much makes fun of them for their career choice. And that, like, the, he's the biggest homie. No, yeah, most definitely. This fool, no, you can't, you can't say this fool's the biggest homie because this fool, I promise you, this fool has never been, never will be in any position. This fool, nah, this fool's lame, bro. Like, that's why it surprises me that Bozo, Bozo from Pico Viejo, Pico Nuevo, where's he from again? That must be for that, bro. Pico from. Viejo, Pico Nuevo. I forget. It don't matter. Um, that he backs. His, I mean, he backs him up, bro. Like it's, it's insanity, bro. Like this fool is a, is a, is a lot, bro. This fool's a downright lot. And any little kid that follows him, is the same shit, dog. Because they do the same shit uh, over yeah. and over again. Yeah, you're right. Caller. This was a, this was a bro. I promise you, this was a lame dog. Palabra, this was lame. This was from the end, no, not even from Inland Empire. He's he's considered a uh, um Cali Mesa or uh I don't even know what it's called, bro. It's, it's a high desert. Some somewhere in the Inland Empire, high desert, Cali yeah. Mesa, some shit like that. Like where there's nothing but desert, bro. That's where he's from. <sighs> Calestico. There you go, Calestico, going to TJ. Ask him about it, bro. All right, I will. Next time, time I, look- next time I give him a call on his show again, if he takes it. <laughs> Who, Hey, fool, palabra, hey, Norby. Yes, sir. Hey, bro, you better smack that fool, dog. <laughs> as soon as we get a chance to meet. You know hey, what, fool, but you hey, better, nah, but you know what? I am going to do that. I am going to, uh, I am going to first, you know, you know, extend my hand to shake it. And let's see if we could talk. And then if, if he still yeah. feels like he wants to, if he wants to feel froggy, then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to let him jump. Hey, bro, but on, on some real shit, if you don't fool, you're going to lose a gang of fans. Fool, but cause, oh, yeah. I mean, you're run the street, right? Yes, sir. All right, then, bro. Like, hey, okay, people are going to say, like, hey, this is some Faisal. Hell yeah, I'm Faisal, fool. But I'm going to beat the dog shit. I'll beat the dog shit out this fool. I don't mean, <laughs> whatever it is, dog. All right, my boy. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna get nothing, to, hey, I got to get to the next caller, man. I got to, um, everybody's well, getting, yeah. getting mad at me for taking too long. <laughs> all right, dog. All right, right. All right. right good right. talking with you, man. Late. Appreciate you, man. Right. Well, there you have it. An- another, another. Oh, actually, here we go. Caller, your name. Where are you calling from? <laughs> Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Hey there. Hey. So I have a quick question. Are you a fan of Hater World? Or are you not? 
Am I a fan of Hater World? No, I am not a fan mm-hmm. of Hater World because there's an individual that consistently mm-hmm. for a year like to talk shit about me. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I, I can't be a Can fan of somebody that. Not, like, huh? what, what went on? Like, I don't. I'm new to your channel. I'm new to this. So I want to figure out, like, wait, what's going on? Because I, I do like his channel. I fuck with his channel. Yeah. So what's going on with you? With me? Oh, I'm just giving it. I'm just giving everything he gave to me back, and on this, and okay. I, I get it. I get it. Why his fans feel a little uh, bothered that I continuously go at him? Was he hating on you because he felt intimidated by you, maybe, or what's going on? Right I don't know now? if he feels intimidated by me. I don't think he does, especially you know the way he talks about me. I don't think he does, but uh, you know, I. I uh, see. I'm new to his channel, so I don't have. What is he like said about you? Oh well, a year's worth of stuff, and I would tell oh, you, sure. I would tell you where to look at it, but he's already taken it off, so you can't. I'm like a bitch move. Oh, pretty much. And uh, you know what? Like I said, like I tell all his fans, like he, I let him talk uh-huh. for a whole year without me doing anything about it, and now it's just my turn. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'll fuck with you. I'll listen to what you got to say, and and I'm here. Got Thank to you. Say, tuned in. I appreciate that. Yeah. I right. appreciate you. Have a good night. Have a good and I'm glad she she brought that up because I do have a lot of people on the comments saying, "Oh, why are you still bothering him? Why are you still talking about him? This dude spent an entire year talking shit, and I'm just making up for lost time." That's about it. Okay, let's get into these uh, comments here before we get another call. Never mind. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? It's the Royal. Norby, can you help me out? Yeah. Royal? Ro- Ro- Royal? I'm looking. Oh, man. Hey. I'm looking for Frank B. This cast in the cage is getting tight around my little shrimp cock. <laughs> Oh wow! Please get a hold of Frank B. I need the key. Well, maybe he'll show up, man. <laughs> My wife's in heat. I need help. One potato, two potato. Oh, 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 oh. oh shit! You, just, you sound like you need Frank B. Pretty bad, or or your 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 wife might. Norby's my wife's about to divorce me and take half my shit. Oh shit! That well, that is California law. Please, Norby's, I'm begging you for help. Well, I'll put it. I'll put in APB to. Uh, I think that's what they say uh, to look for Frank V and uh, have him delivered to your home. Please, Norby, please, I'm begging you. I hear you, man. I hear you. I- I'll do my best. Uh, live chat. If you guys uh, know uh, the whereabouts of Frank V, um, uh, hit up Royalty and uh, maybe uh, let him know that you know we're here to help. Tell Tony that I'm sorry. <laughs> he hanged up. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Ah oh, shit! Okay, that was hilarious. That was hilarious, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, that was royalty calling. Caller, your name? Where are you calling from? Huh? Yes. Hey, it was go stop hating. <laughs> Hater world's a goat. Stop hating, but that's it's in his name. How are you gonna tell me to stop hating? That's in the, that's literally in his name. We got an anonymous caller. It's a 50-50. Let's go. Anonymous, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Wilbur. Wilbur. I'm so- calling from... Yes. I'm calling from the neighborhood. Hey. A couple a couple questions. Go for it. What type of women do you like? What type of women do I like? Uh, strong-willed women. No, I mean, what nationality? 
Mm. I, I don't really look too much into that. I say as long as they're strong willed. Big, skinny, tall. Uh, most big girls aren't really that strong willed. I mean, because they're big. If they were strong willed, they wouldn't get so big. Uh, tall. I mean, I don't have anything wrong with them being taller. How do you feel about transgenders? <laughs> I don't. I don't feel about transgenders. Do you wear condoms? Uh, yes. You. Everybody should, especially if they're uh they're just dating around, having one nighters. You should wear a condom because you you could catch an STD from a sucia or vice versa. So I definitely do recommend people do wear it. That un unless you're like in a relationship and it's been a good amount of time before, you know, that you've been together and you might at, at that point, you know, just raw dog it. Do, do, do you raw dog it? I don't have sex. Oh, okay. No, I don't. I'm a, I'm a neutral. Oh, you're a neutral. Oh, so you, 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 you know, I have a show that you might be able to uh, be on. It's called the Two Hundred uh, Gender Neutral Boys. Um, any, uh, any interest in uh, appearing? I already seen them. They're all tough guys. <laughs> They're all tough guys. They sit there with the little midget, the one that pulls the strings. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, he's a douchebag. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing. That's what I keep hearing. That's the, the word about him. Another question. Go for it. How old were you when you first watched porno? Man. Pfft. You know what? It's crazy because I don't know. I, I, I mean, maybe it might be soft porno. Have you ever heard of the movie called Police Academy? Yes. I think that might have been the first time. Have you ever watched horses? No, 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 I haven't. Well, have you? No. Have you ever watched elephant? Only at the zoos. Oh. Uh, it clicked. <laughs> that was interesting. All right, let's go to these comments before uh, we get another call. Uh, caller is calling from Colonia. <laughs> you can't be picky. <laughs> caller is talking with a mic to the hole in his necks. All right. This food just this all the tortas. <laughs> Red Dog, he can talk about him for a year, which was the same time he talked about Tony and Norby's using their content. Fair is fair, right? Hey, facts. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Caller? Yo, what's up, Norby's? The homie Kike from the city of Escondido. Ah, shit, Kike. What's up, man? What, what you got today? Hey, these fucking callers are killing me, bro. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I'm having a, I'm having a ton of fun here. Hey, was that Royal T calling in or what? The I think fuck, it, I man? think it was, man. I think. I mean, shout out to him to be uh, <laughs> man enough to you know reach out for help like that. Ah damn. Yeah, he's. I guess we are. Huh? God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, nah. that's hilarious! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta get that soundbite, man. I, I'm gonna get that soundbite. Watch. Hey, just clip it, fool. I know, right? I should. Nah, I tell you. Hey, no, dude. But uh, keep, 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 keep putting your foot down on these fools' necks and shit, man. I it's will. Not, man. It's not fun. It's not fun with a tortilla flip. You know what I mean? Exactly right. Yeah, that's what I've been telling all these motherfuckers, man. It's fucking, it's all fun and games talking shit till they start talking back and clapping back, and then it's fucking, oh, 
I'm a fucking victim. Yep. Okay, yeah. All of a sudden, no. I don't even talk about them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you're. I know, I know, you were on Rodeo Radio with the uh, news with Norby segment yesterday and shit. But <laughs> yeah, this fucking this this episode needed to happen yesterday and shit. You know, for all uh, these uh, LGBT plus plus premium fucking uh, <laughs> <laughs> people, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Nah, but yeah, dog. Do the damn thing and shit, fool. We're right here. We got your back and shit. It's all fucking gravy. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you a lot, man. Because this helps me. You know what? Sometimes I do think, you know what? Maybe I've gone in too deep on these cocksuckers right here. But then you, people like you remind me, no, these motherfuckers deserve it. They, 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 they. All of a sudden, not want to say that they're the victims. All of a sudden, say that I don't even talk about them. Bitch, you've been talking. All of a sudden, you just now that you're getting butt hurt, now nah, now you're the victim. Hey, honestly, how long how long has this fucking uh, how long has your platform been talking shit? Like two months? Three yeah, two months? months. About two months. Yeah. Well, we got three more months to go. We just getting started, man. That's right. That's right. That is right. We are just getting started. And on a separate note, man, hey, that was uh, who was the caller that called in about fucking uh. The Chorro fucking uh, dropping out of the fucking race or whatever the fuck he was in to represent for the people, supposedly. Oh, the caller? Uh, yeah, who was the caller called in to, to, to pull already, all that out? I already forgot his name, but I, if I had to guess, I, I'm pretty sure he called from Escondido also. Might be one of your neighbors. Oh, God damn. For real? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know what? No, 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 you, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. No, I take that back. Oxnard. Oxnard. That was Oxnard. Well, from the 805. Shout out to the 805. Definitely. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for the callers doing their due diligence and fucking checking up on that fucking lane, man. I mean, how the fuck are you going to talk about fucking being the voice of the Raza and fucking setting the example to fucking start politicking within your neighborhood and then you don't even show up to the meetings, man? Exactly. Exactly. How how are you gonna push that like that and then not show up? I mean, that yep. kind of says a lot about his commitment, right? Yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be a hundred thousand on fucking YouTube, and then he'll quit. But apparently, you know the the YouTube check kept coming in, and he said, "Fuck it, right?" Pretty much. I mean, these people don't want to listen to me. I'm out. I'm thinking that's, that, but who knows? Who knows? Who really knows? I can't really say that 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 happened, but there there has to be a reason. I mean, why did you even take the job? Why did you run for it if you weren't even gonna fucking show up for it? Why did you wear the uniform if you're not gonna work for the motherfucking company, dog? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hey, who? What happened to the fucking mullet, dog? I tucked it all back in the hat. <laughs> it's it's in, it's inside here. <laughs> you tucked it under the hat. <laughs> you <bought your> <laughs> uh, that shit was funny. That shit was hilarious, man. I had a good time, man. I got hella Toro from that whiskey, though. That whiskey was fucking... Hey, one more time. What was it called again? Huh? The whiskey fool. What was, what oh, was whiskey? It, it was this weird... Uh, you Hold on. Maybe I could uh, find it again because... When I looked for it, it was a fuck. It was a. Let me see if I could see if uh, see if I could find it again. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'll tell you the name right now. It is uh. All right, it's Glen Glen. Glenn Fittish, Glenn Fittish, 12 year old Amontillado Sherry Cask Finish Scotch. You said Glenn, right? Glenn Fittish, G L E N F I D D I C H. Yeah, giggity. You said Glenn. <laughs> it is really good, dude. If you get a chance, try it out. Let me know what you think. I was very shocked of how good it was. It has a bite at it at first, and then it just goes down smooth afterwards. I mean, I was I was taking a bunch of shots of that. That was really good. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. But yeah, man. Nah, fool. Keep, keep doing the damn thing and shit, dog. This is fucking dope. I will, man. I will. Thank you, man. And thank you for supporting, man. I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one. Hey, that's right. All right, man. Thanks, man. Have a good night, okay? Likewise. Al rato. Al rato. All right, guys. You know what? It's about 11.10 right now. How long have we been on so far? We've been on for two hours. We'll take one more caller. Hopefully, it's a good one. And then it's a wrap for tonight. Aside from that, you know, we went through uh, we went through uh, Blue Devil being jealous of Adam 22's new boyfriend. We went through uh, Raider Tommy being a, a no good em- employee. Maybe maybe ended up be maybe becoming an ex employee. Who knows? Uh, Milk seventy four on his uh, appearance to uh, No Jumper, and uh, let's see, we had a a possible royalty call. Which I thought was uh, hilarious. Him asking for help. Uh, and then. Oh. And then Gil. Getting. Uh, getting removed. From his position. From the city council. Uh, neighborhood council. All right, anonymous caller. 50-50 people. Caller your name. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, San Jose. San Jose in the house. What's up man? How you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, man. I just had some whiskey. That's what's I'm up. Fucked up. Hell to yeah. the dome. Hey. And I wanted to do karaoke. That's right. Handle. I went out cruising mm. the other night. Mm. And my carucha is out of sight. Hey. I seen a muñeca. She was looking fly. He said, me paro. 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 El chile se me paro. 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 That's it, brother. Hey, that's perfect right there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hell, I love, you know what? I love that song. I can't play it too often when I'm cruising, but I fucking love that song. Hey, next time I'll call back and I'll sing it again because I'm going to hey. trip. Hell, yeah. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for that. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, guys. You know what? That is a great way to end the show with a little bit of karaoke. And uh, everybody, thank you for everybody that came through. Please hit the likes because it does help out. Share it. You know, do clips. Do whatever you want. Help us grow. I appreciate the live chat. I appreciate all the callers. I appreciate everybody that came through tonight. And uh, we're going to keep doing this. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit uh, the all notifications so you know exactly when uh, we're going to go live. As you can tell, I haven't been ha- having a set schedule. i just been uh, shooting it from the hip. Uh, but thank you to everybody that showed up today. Thank you to everybody that watched just the rerun of this. And aside from that, I think that's all we have for today. Uh, again, thank you to the live chat. Appreciate all of you, all the moderators. Thank you for uh, moderating. And for that, everybody, don't forget, run the fade. Wonderful.